Welcome back. The Twitter CEO Elon Musk now launching a new artificial intelligence company called XAI. This, as Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, is laying the groundwork for Congress to regulate AI technology. Joining me right now is Net Choice Vice President and General Counsel, also Professor of Internet Law at George Mason University's Scalia Law School. Carl Zabo is here. Carl, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. I want to get your take on Elon Musk's efforts here with this new AI company. But first, talk to us about the potential regulation. Can you regulate AI? What would that look like? What is your reaction? Yeah, thanks for having me on. So the last thing America needs is innovation at the speed of Congress. Congress can barely pass gas. We do not need them regulating AI. As one of your previous hosts, uh, sorry, previous guests mentioned, China is not slowing down. They are moving fast. With AI, the question is not if, but where. Do we want AI, the next decade of innovation, to come from America, or do we want it to come from somewhere else? We've already seen this administration give away our energy independence. The last thing we can afford is to give away our technological independence through cumbersome and burdensome regulation that will slow down good actors from creating life-saving technology that we're seeing today. Yeah, I mean, what I'm worried about is using these machines, these artificial intelligence machines in the military. I mean, let's face it, 90 percent of advanced semiconductor manufacturing is made in Taiwan. 90 percent. Those are the kinds of semiconductors, advanced semiconductors, that are used in the military. Can you think about a time that China owns that advanced semiconductor manufacturing and gets a leg up on the military and is able to send these machines in for military and, you know, uh, potential conflict? I mean, one of the things that you've pointed out time and time again is how we become increasingly dependent on China and how they went from stealing our technology to now creating their own and then shipping it back to us. That's exactly what we're talking about with this so-called pause on development. If we pause, then only the good actors will stop developing, innovating, and creating the next decade of innovations. And the bad actors will continue to develop their technologies and send it right back to us. So you're exactly right. There's a huge national security concern if we were to, quote, hit pause and be just like Europe. Remember, Europe operates on the don't do anything until the government lets you do it. And if we were yeah. to have the type of technological sector that Europe has, Lord help us all. Yeah, that's a good analogy. You know, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan has subpoenaed the Federal Trade Commission chairman, uh, Lena Khan, over the agency's probe into Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter. Meanwhile, Musk sat down with Fox News' Tucker Carlson and exposed the social media platform during the Twitter files. Uh, and, and, you know, we all know how there was collusion of 1,000 people in government working with Twitter to amplify lies and suppress truth. Here's a bit of tonight's interview, which we'll all be watching. Watch. The degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. That's pretty incredible, Carl, that the government even had access to direct messages on Twitter. Your reaction? Yeah, if you look at what Representative Jim Jordan has done, he is all about exposing the weaponization of government. And this is just yet another example. What we are seeing right now from the Federal Trade Commission, one of the most powerful government agencies, is basically a harassment campaign against Elon Musk for making us aware of this type of pressuring of social media platforms by our own government. And let's remember that we have a government that is now asking for more and more power, more and more money to increase the pressure. And so I will expect Congress to step in, start cutting the funding mm. to these agencies, start using things like the Holman rule, where we can actually oh, yeah. cut funding to specific federal employees themselves when they engage in these types of harassments of political enemies. Yeah. Oh, they're going to cut. They're going to use the appropriations process. You're right. Uh, Kevin, jump in. Kevin O'Leary. Yeah, I'm a little concerned that this move towards regulation 
in a very nascent industry is, is premature because we're competing globally with the Chinese and others is something that we don't understand the potential of yet and that's a market that's undefined. It seems to be spilling over from the heavy hand going down on crypto right now and I'm not sure many consumers understand the difference. There's no speculative asset class in, in AI at all but somehow it's been lumped in on the hill as part of this digitization and the control of it. From a policy perspective, how do you fight this? You know, I think exactly what uh, Representative Jordan and the House Republicans are doing. So what you have seen is the importation of European approach to technology. Remember, Europe's entire approach is mother may I to innovation. And what we have seen is people like the Federal Trade Commission, like we were just talking about, flying over to Europe, coordinating with their governmental officials on ways to import their bad practices. So what we need to do is start cutting off the funding to these federal agencies and forcing them to get back to doing their jobs, which is protecting Americans. That's how you dislodge this type of heavy-handed regulation from the innovation that is necessary in this nation. All right, we'll leave it there. Carl, great to have your insights. Thank you. Carl Zabel, 